everyone, my name is Jen Tierney and I am one of the standbys at Comfortway in London and I've been given this little camera to go around and bug every single person in the building so that you can get some insight into what happens backstage at Comfortway. So, hope you enjoy the tour. See you soon. So, here we are with our gorgeous Rochelle, who is our head of wigs here at Come From Away. Hello. Hello. And you've been with us since the beginning, haven't you? Yes. Awesome. And how many wigs do we have in the show, Rosh? Um, well, we have six wigs in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we have six um, on stage cast, like ladies in the show, that are on every night. Yeah. And we also have four standbys, so they each have a wig. Mm -hmm. And their wigs get styled differently. Um, depending what characters they're playing, so obviously they they cover multiple roles. Mm -hmm. um, so. So who's is who up here? Okay, so this is Jenna. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she plays Beulah. Yes. So um, she's supposed to be a bit of a uh, she's supposed to be older. Mm -hmm. um, so her wig has got grey through it, and then we've got Kate. And this is Diane. This is Diane, yes. And her wig is the more glam wig. Is it? It's so similar to it's, her own hair as well, isn't it? Yes, well, because they're supposed to look so natural and it's not supposed to be a distraction from mm. the actual show, um, all of their wigs are based on their actual hair colour. So um, with Kate's wig... I think they um, took a swatch of her, her actual hair yeah. and got it colour matched to the wig. Yeah. And then we have got Alice's wig mm -hmm. and she plays Captain Beverly Bass, that's kind of her main character. Yeah. Um, and her wig is a bob, mm -hmm. so it's kind of, you know, business kind of no fuss type thing. Great. And just talk us um, around, so the front here for people that don't really know wigs, like what's what the, the lace and everything here, because you've just had that redone, haven't you? Yeah, so this is, um, they're all lace front wigs, they're all real human hair wigs, mm -hmm. which means we can style them as you would style your own hair. Gemma's up there. Gemma's, yes. So, um, this wig is dreadlocks, and also she's also playing a kind of older character because she has a grown-up son mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen the show I won't spoil it <laughs> um, but she has a grown-up son and um, so she has some grey through her uh, wig as well mm -hmm. um, and then we've got Emma Miss and Janice. she's kind of she yeah she plays Janice um, and she's a bit of a, I suppose, the younger character, isn't she? Because it's yeah. her first day on the job. And then we have Kirsty. Yeah. Her wig is a bit more kind of like natural. She's got kind of a natural curl and it's yeah. kind of pinned back a bit. Yeah. So then when we go to the cover wigs. Mm -hmm. um, is that mine up there, that top one? This one's yours, yes. yeah. There she is. Um, that's <laughs> her. And then we've got the other wigs. So if, yeah. say, they're in for Bonnie, then we'll wet it down and make it curly. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they're on for, like, one of the older characters, because they don't have greys through their wigs because they have to cover multiple, yeah. what we'll do is we'll pin them up usually, which makes them look a bit older. Yeah. Um, awesome. And here we have our lovely Lucy, who's Deputy Head of Wardrobe, and she's going to talk us through all the costumes for Come From Away. So is this where you store them all? Yeah, so these are all our standby costumes. So wow. every standby covers around four or five different characters, maybe more. Yeah. And so as you can see, this is our wall of costumes. We've got all their shoes, so all their first cover stuff is down here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so every character is here. Like normally we'd have all the normal costumes on there, but they're all in their dressing rooms at the moment because it's going to be the half soon. Yes, and so you guys also dress downstairs, right? Yes. So you're in the wings with us all the time. And So what does a typical day in wardrobe look like for you guys? So we'll come in and we normally have a lovely laundry to do for the night before, so <laughs> lots of smelly socks and underwear <laughs> <laughs> and all the T-shirts and stuff. So we'll get through that. Awesome. And then we'll set up all the dressing rooms for all the performers. So mm. all your costumes are ready, your shoes, your jewellery, mm. underwear. And then Derek will come in and he'll do a preset for all the show. Mm -hmm. So all the costumes will be like folded so we can do all our quick changes. 
and then yeah when the show starts we'll go downstairs and any quick changes that the performers need we're there for it awesome and it's a different type of show isn't it because we only really have one main costume but then we have the add-ons right yeah and we use the add-ons for like the standby rehearsals and stuff you guys are brilliant with mm. us for that so that helps us with rehearsals how does that is that is does it just justify does that <laughs> <laughs> not justify does that kind of what's that in comparison to in other shows that where you have lots of different mm. costumes so normally a lot of the characters will have like jeans and a t-shirt as their base layer mm -hmm. and then throughout the show because you change characters so much it might be like we put on a jacket or a hat like for example like Beverly Bass will have her um, flight jacket and then her captain's hat mm -hmm. and then yeah so our quick changes are adding on the bits taking off bits and layering things up and there's a lot of like choreography on stage as well so mm, yes yeah. and what about preset that's quite a heavy preset for you guys isn't it like hats and drawers and jackets on trees and all that kind of stuff yeah exactly a lot of like things that can be grabbed on stage so hopefully when the audience is watching it it's not super noticeable there's mm -hmm. like so, sorry noticeable that there's quick changes but they're happening all the time well you guys are awesome we have a very very brilliant team and wardrobe thank you love yeah. see you soon <laughs> Here we are with our lovely Jonathan Andrew Hume, who plays Kev J in the show, and you've been with us since the very beginning. Yeah. How's it been? Four years have come from away. It doesn't feel like four years. In a really, like, soppy way, the show is such a, a beautiful thing to, to do. The story is so just impactful and life-affirming that it kind of only feels like we've been doing it for such a short time. Yeah. Um, and it's just a joy to do with so many brilliant people in this building as well. Yeah, how many Kev teas have you had? I've had, I feel like, I don't know, is it me? Um, <laughs> I had David Shannon, David Thaxton, Mark, Mark. well that's it, just And then three. standbys. The and then all of the different standbys, standbys that we've yeah. had as well, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to ask you, who's your favourite? No, I can't do that. <laughs> it depends. If Mark is watching, then Mark. <laughs> If David is watching, it's David. <laughs> They're all brilliant, aren't they? You've had great partnerships. Yeah. And, and we've just hit the 10 week mark before we close. How are you I feeling know. about that well, after I've been here? I'm really sad about it. Um, but I think also because, because we were told that we're closing with such a long time period before it happened, mm. I think it's nice that there has been time for us to actually process and say goodbye yeah. and you know kind of go full circle and yeah just have a really really great the last show is going to be amazing absolutely yeah. it's going to be epic yeah. and we've made friends for life here haven't we yeah completely awesome thanks jay have a good show thank you and here we are with our gorgeous gemma knight jones who plays hannah in the show now you joined us back just after the pandemic right yeah i how, did how was it coming into the show with lovely sam oh my goodness an absolute dream to be honest um unexpected dream it happened really quite quickly um, I think I auditioned one week and then I did a final the, the week after and found out I think the next day or so that I'd got it and then started rehearsing maybe a week after that it was very very quick and totally unexpected and it has been such a beautiful ride I've loved every single second and yeah it's been just a job of dreams in so many, so many different ways. We're very lucky to have you, Gem. Oh, thank you very much. Had you seen the show before you got cast in the show? Yes, I had. I really wanted to see it because, in fact, I knew um, Kat Simmons, who played yeah. Hannah before me, and mm -hmm. so I wanted to come and support her and see her in it. So I came to watch the show. I can't remember where and what year, and absolutely loved it. It's funny because I was talking about this literally to another cast member a few days ago, and I remember I literally cried my eyes out watching it on my own. Oh. And then I booked tickets for my sister to come and watch it for her for her birthday and again. So I saw it twice actually before I got it. So again, makes wow. it when you then get a job that you love from a show that you absolutely love, it's mm -hmm. it's like a bigger dream. You're like, I can't believe I'm now on that stage when I was sitting in the audience, you know, watching it just absolutely. a few years before. Yeah. yeah. What was the rehearsal process like? Because you learned it kind of like I did, where there was only a few of us learning it at the same time. Yeah. Which is hard in this show, isn't yeah. it? Because of the logistics. So how really was that for tough. you? Yeah. Um, it was only me and Sam on a day at the time. We learned it in two and a half weeks, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, 
and yeah it was a wild ride I mean I was sort of fairly familiar with the music and I remember just having it on repeat so much so that my son was just singing I'm an island it was like four then and he would just sing along because I was just playing this soundtrack on repeat Aww. just so I could prep myself as much as possible before coming in the room wow. has Sebi seen the show he hasn't I've got to bring him before we end <gasps> you I have, have to, to. I have to I have to I know he's on my list of things to do when he's next on holiday probably around Christmas well tonight. you've got ten weeks I know. how are you feeling about that I don't know, all the things, all the things. I mean, it, it will be amazing to be in the show as it ends. Like, I can't wait for the, just, I think it's going to just be so much joy. As much as it's going to be sad, it's going to be really joyous, I think, to end such mm. a beautiful show with such a lovely company of people. So, yeah, I'm feeling a lot of different things. And, you know, I think you have to end things for other new things to to, to, to come into your life, right? So absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we'll have a beautiful show tonight, my darling. Thank you very much, and thank you for chatting. You're welcome. So here we are with James Doherty, who's our wonderful Claude. How has come from away for you? It's great. Come from away is great. You know that. I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what I want to ask you. Yeah. Since you have the very first opening line of the show, yes. What was it like coming mm. on stage after the pandemic for the first show? Oh uh, well, um, I mean that. that yeah, that was extraordinary. That was extraordinary. I think I don't think anyone who was on that stage that night or um, was in that audience will ever forget that. We, I, I started this show um, ten weeks before we closed, so I did five weeks rehearsal and five weeks uh, performing, and then we stopped for the pandemic for fifteen months, and we all sat at home, and uh, then we came back, and when we walked out that night, it, I mean, it was electric. Normally, you walk out and there's there's not a sound and there's just the drum going and you think right here we go well that night that night we walked out and um everyone stood up and, and um cheered for about five minutes it mm. was very emotional and uh the same at the end of that first number the same and um i'll never forget that it was an extraordinary electricity on the stage and the passing of energy between the cast and the audience everyone was so glad and so happy to be there either performing it or watching it it didn't actually make any difference it was the same for everybody and yeah. um yeah i'll never forget that night it was incredible and i think that um it's been a big difference between even though i only did it for five weeks before the pandemic i think obviously it was a show about this amazing community after 9 11 but after the pandemic that 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 changed the show somehow had more Resonance. We'd all been through something uh, that affected us and affected our lives and made our lives very difficult. And obviously, you know, terrible things happened during the, the, the pandemic. And um, so the show resonates in a, in a completely different way about, you know, kindness and humanity and generosity of spirit. That, that, that message is um, more relevant now than ever before, I think. Yeah, it was a good first night. Totally agree. Yeah. We're very lucky to have you. So here we are with lovely Kate Graham. Hello, just putting my boots She's on. putting the boots on. She's getting ready. We just had the five minute call. Yes, Kate is our wonderful Diane. And you've been with us since when, Kate? When did you start uh, the show? La, 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 la. Uh, just pre pandemic, so like February 2020. And the cast changed, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. The cast changed. And you performed this for like five weeks and the pandemic. What yeah, was it like coming that. back? Oh, God, it was brilliant. So that, honestly, that the memory of that night will live with me forever. The first show back was just. We were so thrilled to be here. The audience was so thrilled to be there. It was just honestly the best. We were all just crying, weren't we? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> no. Had you seen the show before you got cast? I had, because I'm friends with Kirsty Malpass. We did um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory together, and she was on as Beverly. Wow. So then I came to see her. Oh, fun. What did you think of it? Did you, did you see yourself in the show when you th watched it? or? Well... <laughs> At the moment in time, I'd just been like, oh, I need to take a break from theatre to see my child for a bit. Yeah. And I was like, I can't do much theatre. I'd left Mamma Mia in the June, mm -hmm. and I think I came to see it in the September. And I was like, oh, this is awkward, because <laughs> I really want to do that show now. Yeah, <laughs> and so then it was the first thing that I was like, oh, I need to do theatre again. Absolutely. Well, we're so lucky to have you. OK, so we've just had the beginner's call. And everybody will be on their way down shortly. You can hear the audience settling down in the front. Here's to a great show. So here we are as beginners. We have Harry Morrison, we have Ben on stage management and Live Sound. What's happening here, folks? 
Yeah. I'm having a microphone check. Yeah. Microphone check. Thank you, it's beautiful. <laughs> and Ben, what are you doing over there? You're checking everybody in as they arrive to the indeed. stage, yes? So as they come on, so you know we've got beginners. Amazing. We start the show. So here we are. So you take everybody off as they arrive. It's a bit dark, but yes, we can see. What's it like being stage management on Come From Away? It's a dream. <laughs> it's great fun. It's a lovely show. You've only joined us recently, haven't you? I have. Two months I've been here. Amazing. And Liv, you were with us since the beginning, but I then left to have babies. Yeah, I had two. You did. It's been a long four years for you. <laughs> Not much sleep. Yeah, I opened it and I'm going to close it. In between, I was busy. There you are. You were very busy. Well, we're glad you're back with us, darling. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going in there. Are you trying to avoid me? No, I'm going in the little room. Where's, Where's the little room? Show me the little, the little room. room. It's it's de it's definitely not the sound room. <laughs> This, this is where we sit. This is where Mary Doherty could always be found at the five, having Doing a little stretching. stretch and our calf our muscles calves, on the like step, that, like just that. for you, Mary, if you're watching. Um, so what happens in here? We all kind of congregate in here, don't we, at the, at the beginners? We just sit and we have a lovely chat. A lovely chit chat. Yeah. Lovely. We'll have a lovely show, darling. Thank you very much. And here's Kirsty and Jenna. Kirsty Malkes. I was just coming Getting in ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All set for your show. Always. Come sit, come sit. My torch. Come sit. My torch in my pocket. Yes, what is your preset? To a torch. It's a, it's a torch. Is that it? That's it? I can't remember, yes. Just a torch, yes. Here's <laughs> Emma Salvo at Beginners getting ready to do the show. Hi. How's your day been? Just at Fine. <laughs> that was Alice Fern saying she's at Beginners, which is, is actually a, a special event in itself. Why is that, Emma? Because I'm never at Beginners. <laughs> But at least you're owning it. Uh, I'm late, I must sleep. For those people who don't know what Beginners is. For Beginners, that is Tell when me. the show should start. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and what is, is your favourite part of Come From Away? All of it. All of it. Do you have a favourite moment that you like doing or watching? None My of it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> My life. I love giving Alice her telephone. <laughs> sometimes she remembers and sometimes she forgets. <laughs> Stand by, please, guys. There you Thank go. you, Ben. Yay. I must sleep. Have a good show, everybody. Oh, bye. 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 Have a good show, Miss Fern. <laughs> Here's our band getting ready to play. Here we go. <laughs> Harry, what have you done? Go then. What have you done? I'm wearing my own shoes. <laughs> Not your costume shoes. Uh, are these even my trousers? Yeah, so they're on my trousers. After taking the mick out of Emma for being late, <laughs> we're now holding because Harry's got his wrong I'm shoes really on. I'm really sorry, Harry. <laughs> But not your shoes to go with Because these are more comfortable than my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like, these aren't black shoes. There they are. I did it I've done it. I made a mistake. Well done, Lucy. See? Oh, it's so vital. <laughs> get your shoes on. I'll get my shoes on. All right, well, here we are with our lovely Civvy. Hello. Real name Helen Civiter, but we call her Civvy. <laughs> There's no one across the West End. Uh, so you just joined us recently, didn't you? I did. How's it been? I'm having a lovely time. Oh, amazing. This is um, one of my first... I had my first full week off last week, and this is the beginning of another week, and who knows if I'll be on or off. On, <laughs> on. Don't know. But when you first joined us, you got to play Janice for a couple of weeks, I right? I did. Was it good being on straight away? Oh, my gosh, it was such a luxury. So I started learning my first track, which was Bonnie, the vet, and did my. I learned that in two weeks and did the put-in... Uh, on the Friday of my second week and then I had two weeks to do the Janice plot and then I had the luxury of going straight on so it really cemented my understanding of the show and um, my confidence grew it was, well, it was such a luxury to have two weeks to do it awesome and how many parts have you learnt now? I have now learnt four four which are? which are Bonnie, Janice, Diane and Beulah fab well done darling and now, thanks also as a long come from away you've been doing about ten other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so you're working as associate choreographer, associate movement. Director, I beg your pardon. It's a play, right? Got you. And which play is that? This is for a Christmas Carol at the Old Vic. Awesome. And how are you coping with all that? Like whilst learning this show as a standby and doing that as alongside. Well, I have the wonderful luxury of both companies are just an absolute dream, and they've been so kind in um, scheduling all rehearsals around it. So they've both been amazing. So that's been the first uh, thing to tick and to say I'm so grateful for. And secondly, I um, had already put a Christmas Carol on in San Francisco, so I knew the show quite well. Um, so it's been. Uh, I knew the choreography to teach it, so it wasn't learning too much. And I had also got through nearly all of my rehearsals here, so I felt like I had completed one job to be able to move on to the other one. 
Awesome, you've been brilliant, absolutely. And you're also, you have a really, really close relationship with Matt, who's our dance captain, right? I do! How did you guys know each other? Matt Clark and I trained together at uh, Doreen Bird College a long time ago. <laughs> uh, we graduated, what, 23 years ago, I think. You can work out our age. And is this the first time you've worked with him? No, this is our fourth job together. Wow. So we did a night together in 2000-ish, something like that. Um, we did Set Night Fever together around 2004. Uh, we did Chicago together in Singapore, 2018, something like that. And now we're doing this together. Amazing. What a luxury. Hey? Absolutely amazing mm. to work with friends. It's so nice. So awesome. nice. But everyone in this company is just incredible. It's mm. a wealth of experience and the company is just such a dream to work for in that respect. I think being a standby is a tough job. And mm. I've done lots of jobs, but this has been my hardest with regard to how the show is put together and how you don't stop and it's amazing to have no egos in this show and just be so supported by the company when you're on all the time and then thank god for that oh good well you're more than welcome Sylvia. you're brilliant and we're very happy to have you with Yay! us see you in a bit Bye. thank you for chatting Bye. and here's lovely lucy park again how were your hannah shows the other night uh, it was really good i had a lot of fun and yeah it was such a good show now you had done a run in the day playing bonnie yes and then played hannah in the evening how was that it was actually okay. I mean, I was quite scared of uh, basically, yeah, basically playing two parts um, in in a day, but actually it was really good, and everyone was so supportive as well. So you know, everyone's trying to kind of help, kind of gently reminding me, okay, Lucy, this is where should you you, you should be. So, <laughs> yeah, it was actually really good. Awesome. I think for people watching this that may not know what our job is at Come From Away, so we all cover five or six parts in the show. Yes. And it's like being a swing, but for lead roles, yes. right? So there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of logistics and all those sort of things. How are a you? A lot of chairs. A lot of chairs, <laughs> the other cast member. How are you finding that, switching between all those different roles like that? Um, it is very interesting. I mean, this is my first ever, well, it is, this is my West End debut. But Yay! also this is my first ever sort of kind of the standby slash swing sort of kind of work. But, so I was really worried when I started. But once you kind of understand the actual show, how everything goes, I think it actually, you know, gets easier and easier. But I have to admit, like, the first... Until I learned like the first like three parts, I was in tears. I was like, "Ooh, what is going on?" But yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah, once you understand it, it's yeah, it's yeah. good. You've been brilliant, <laughs> and you've played uh, Beulah and Hannah so far. Yes. So far. What's uh, if there's a role that you could pick to play out of all the ones that you cover? Which would it be? I would love to play Diane if I'm given the chance. I think it's such a lovely part, and um, I would love to uh, kind of play alongside Robert as well yes. if I'm given the chance. So we will see. I'm sure you will, darling. The way things are in this, <laughs> <laughs> most of us have actually played all our parts now. I think that those of us that were the original standbys and in, in, in the second cast as well, Sorel mm -hmm. as well. I might chat to her in a minute. Yes. Um, she's played all her parts as well. So I have no doubt as the winter comes that you will. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> all right, darling. Lots of love. And here we are with lovely Sorel Hi. Mar. She recently rejoined us again. I did. Coming back and forth, you never can leave the, the I rock. Know. Right? Third time back for me. <laughs> well, from when I started, yeah. Third time lucky. So you yeah. started with us in February 2020, or January 2020 for yes. rehearsals. Yes, so second cast, yeah. Right. As and by them. Awesome. And it was kind of half and half. Ten of us stayed, ten people moved on. Mm -hmm. You were one of the ten that joined us as a standby. Was, yeah. And it, how was it learning Janice with the new members of the on-stage cast coming yeah. in? Yeah, so at that point, Janice was my first cover. So we were really lucky because Emma, who plays Janice, is one of the original cast. So she wasn't in the rehearsals with all the new cast. Mm -hmm. So I learned my first cover sort of on my feet. Often, if you're a cover, you sort of, you know, you're sitting and kind of noting, watching the person. We were really lucky, all the standbys actually that year, because mm -hmm. we got to learn it as if we were, were the part. Mm -hmm. So we learned it on our feet, which was brilliantly helpful because with this show when you've got to learn multiple parts half the battle really is learning the show and the mm. order of the show and, what, and what's coming so we were fortunate we already had our first one down by the time we opened and we knew the show really well um so it made my i do five so it made my other four um characters that I had coming after that miles easier because i at least knew the framework of the, of the awesome show. and you've managed to play all five of the tracks that you cover yes yeah yeah have you got that a favorite out of all of them um i love all of them they're all brilliant parts you know you can't you can't get better parts really for a whole piece so they're all excellent but my mm. favorite is bonnie yeah my favorite one to do yeah why is that why is she your fave um 
I don't know. It's funny because they've all got brilliant bits about you, that you could sort of join, you know, attach yourself to, and sort of think, oh no, that fits with me, or I kind of have an understanding of that. But it's something about Bonnie. I just feel like I'm in the right shoes. It feels like that's the one that I feel most comfortable comfortable in, and yeah. it feels the most. Um, right for me absolutely but yeah. absolutely but now you've moved over because you've taken over on maternity yes. so, so now you're going to be... yeah take over when lovely Kiara went off on her maternity leave so now I'm in different order covers to I was before absolutely so you'll be playing both Beulah and Bonnie at certain shows yes, yes. amazing yes. and we love your Beulah what do oh, we call I her Beulah too um, oh I don't know what we call her we have a lot of love for your Beulah what does Alice call her uh, I don't know what Alice Cam calls Beulah. her Cam <laughs> No, I do like Beulah because she's just a big heart, isn't she? Yeah. She's a big, well, she's you, like, isn't she? Oh, she's basically you, she's that big heart. She's and a big, so... a big you know, a warm, like, knows everybody, organising everybody, looking after everybody, so she's lovely to play for that um, respect. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Had oh. you seen the show before you got cast in the show? Uh, no, I'd seen bits of it, um, and I remember quite clearly, I thought, oh, I'll just nip in and see it mm-hmm. after I got the job. I was thrilled to get it because I'd seen all the, you know, the press and everything, and I knew lots of people... Um, loads of the original cast and lots of us now actually all trained at um, Guildford School of Acting where, mm. where I went so I went to college with Mark I went to college with Mary I went to college with Jenna mm-hmm. and Harry and Kiara there was loads of us who I knew them all um, and I sat and watched it knowing what parts I have and I thought oh I'll just watch all my parts you know, <laughs> so I can sort of see what they're doing and th- sat there thinking because <gasps> it's so busy and unlike anything else but after seeing it I was you know, even more proud to be, and I'm, I'm yeah. thrilled to be back, and it's a, a wonderful piece, and I'm proud I've got to be involved with it, yeah. really. Awesome. Well, we're thrilled to have Okay, so we are here with the gorgeous Jen Tierney, who Hello. has been interviewer extraordinaire, <laughs> interviewing everybody else, and now I feel like it's your turn. We're over on the other side now. I've quite enjoyed being behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long have you been with the company? I've been here since the very beginning. So um, I joined the company. Well, I say that, that the, the company started in September 2018 in rehearsals in London, um, and then I joined them in January in Dublin to start learning the show while they had already opened over there. So... Um, so a little bit of Dublin, but mostly London in January 19 when we opened here. So you were going to do full circle of closing the show as well. How are you feeling about that? <sighs> so many mixed emotions. It's It's been a real gift, this show, like on so many levels. Apart from the roles that we get to play and, and everything, you know, all the kind of the mix of the roles and the different types of things we have to do and the mental challenge of being a standby, doing all six roles... All of that, in one thing, is the biggest challenge I've ever had in my career. But apart from that, the show is just really, really special. And it's felt to me like the one central thing that I've had in my life, especially when we all had the pandemic and everything, it's been the one thing that's felt like a constant. So I think that it's got a, I've got a real emotional attachment to it. So yeah. I'll really miss it. I'll really miss coming in, seeing all of you, being a part of the show you know being a part of something that feels really unique and special i think it's gonna be an emotional day oh my god yeah i hope we're also sitting up here eating pizza crying so (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's gonna be tough do you have a favorite part that you like to play and why oh my god i love playing all of them for different reasons genuinely um i love because they all have so many different assets to them Um, i really love playing bev because she's such a confident little trailblazer where she's just set so much history and you feel i feel really proud to kind of portray that story because of what she achieved in her life um, and she gets that lovely song and everything as well. Um, but I also really love playing Diane as well because she's got that lovely connection with yeah. Nick and it's been an absolute gift to play that with all the Nicks that we've had over the years. Um, and she's kind of the one that has a partnership really, like a real partnership throughout the show and a, and a real story and a journey. So that's really nice to play. Yeah. Have you ever been on stage and thought, oh my goodness, I don't know which part I'm playing? There's definitely been moments where I've gone to sit in somebody else's chair because your muscle memory, if I've played one role the night before and then another one the next night, and I know other people have felt like this as well, your muscle memory goes to do that and you yeah. go, oh no, 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 go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely happens, yeah. But it's you know what it's like, all of us in here are standbys, you get, you know, your brain is just constantly ticking and I'm always even now three four years down the line I'm always thinking ahead I'm always thinking about what's the beginning of my next line because I just always it's just that little bit of doubt in your mind going do I know this still but then it all seems to go okay touch wood oh my gosh you're amazing I've been here when you've done five parts in a week ridiculous (laughs) um and finally if you're not on apart from this particular incident where I'm videoing you what do you do as a standby well we like to do a line run 
in the dressing room. We're actually, we're actually about to do one, aren't we? We are. Hold on. Look, we're, we're all in are. waiting. <laughs> Stuart Hickey, Lucy, we are about yes. to do a line we run. Are. We're very studious as standbys, yeah. We like to do line runs, chat through tracks and stuff like that. But equally, it's really nice because I think we're all at the stage now we all feel pretty solid with our roles, pretty much, that we can enjoy each other's company a bit as well. And with 10 weeks left to go, I think we just want to make the best of the time that we have. So, yeah, a nice mix between work and enjoy each other's company. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, bye. Thank you, bye. Yay. All right, here we are with lovely Ash Rossetti, Hello. who is a newbie to our building, <laughs> but not a newbie to the show. No. So you came to us from the Australian cast. Yes. So what's that been like? Like you've moved countries, you've come to a production that you know, but with different people. What's that been like for you? It's been amazing. You know, I keep telling people it's like stepping into an alternate universe because the show is the same, but it's not. It's completely different at the same time. Um, it's been wonderful, like, getting to play with different actors and also just experiencing what London audiences are like, and I've loved it. And is there a difference? Like, do you feel a comparison? Um, the show feels a lot faster here for some reason. I'm not sure why. It just feels a lot quicker paced. Wow. Um, but, I mean, it's essentially, you know, it has the same heart and soul, and, yeah, that, that's the kind of wonderful thing about it. Amazing. No, you came into acting a bit... That's Craig. <laughs> having a wrap while we interviewed what did you do <laughs> oh my god let's come back to ash <laughs> sorry about that so you came into acting a bit later than I most did, of yes. us so what did you do before you were acting i actually worked in marketing so wow. I, I sat by i left high school and i didn't really know what i wanted to do I'd always, I'd always had a bit of a creative itch or edge or whatever you want to call it um but i ended up working in marketing for six years and then at 26 i was like i cannot do this anymore the itch, the itch was too strong and so I auditioned for kind of all the big acting schools in Australia got into one called WAPA which is over on the west coast um, and then three years later graduated and now here I am awesome aren't we lucky now do you have a favourite role to play in the show Kevin J Kevin J I love that track there is so much heart and soul and I get to play opposite the wonderful Mark Dugdale <laughs> if he's watching <laughs> Okay, so I've just been running around the building chatting to some people and the standbys are currently in my dressing room doing a line run. Let's go and have a little look. This is what we get up to when the, the show's running. Airport and someone has written red marker, you are here. Excuse me, I need to find a phone. I need to call my son. The phones are over there, but it's going to be a wire. They're all lined up at the airport, people, and so eventually we put an out-of-order sign oh on no. just so we can get people on the buses. 11.48 p.m. Buses and drivers are now taking passengers to shelters, not just in Gander, but also to Gamble, Appleton, and farther communities of Lewisport, Norris Arm, and Glenwood. Our bus sits there forever. While all the others leave. Okay, so I'm now waiting. It's halfway through the show, and Screech is just about to finish. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, I'm just waiting on Mark Dugdale coming up to his dressing room for a quick chat because he normally comes up here, normally for a quick swig of uh, Coke Zero and a quick hairspray. So we'll see him come up in a second. Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> Break time. Oh, oh my God. How's the show? This is my, oh my, no one sees this, this is my ritual. <laughs> no, I've just told them what I it have is. To fix my hair. Hair. I have hat hair. <laughs> yes. I have some Coke Zero. I just literally said that. <laughs> How's the show going? It's going really well tonight. It's a lovely crowd. Yes. Really full. Really, um, they're all really into it, really up for it. Screech got the biggest reaction I've had, it's had in a while. I was like, woo! Wow, amazing, uh, awesome. Do yeah. you love playing Kev T? I love playing Kevin T. Do you miss being I think I might still play it when the show closes. Yes, I just think. somewhere, we... I'll find somewhere to do it. Yeah, we'll do it in the park or something. Yeah, um, just for anyone who wants to come and watch it. Did you ever miss being a standby? Yes, I do. Sometimes. Hold on, I'm just gonna. I like to turn Alice Fern up, so I know I'm not late. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do miss being a standby because you miss that kind of real like adrenaline rush and oh, this isn't in your body. Do you know what I mean? And this yeah. newness. Because every time you did it as a standby, it felt like the first time. Yeah. You know, whereas it's a completely different gig doing it every night. You know. Absolutely. And here we are with lovely Craig Armstrong, who recently joined us in September, yes? Yep. Awesome. Now, you are our first cover, Claude, but you had seen the show before you got cast on the show, yes? Yeah, so I saw the original cast a few years back, um, and I just remember sitting there going, I have to be in this show. Aww. So this is a bit of a dream come true for me. 
wow. know, to be in this part of this company. And how you find being a standby? Lights okay, so up on the evening's performance. There you go. Um, it's all live. <laughs> How am I finding it? Yeah. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done, I think. Um, it's so hard, <laughs> but the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Um, the, you know, the, the the way the company are, the way everybody backstage is, just it, it feels like a real family and everybody is there supporting you and it just feels really special. And it's... to be able to tell such an amazing story like this is... Is very special. It is, it is. And now you had your family in and your little boy watching you the I other did. night. How was that? That was obviously a very uh, emotional and amazing experience to see my son afterwards and was just in awe of what we kind of just performed on stage and he just loved it. It was it was a really, really special moment. Has he seen you in all your shows? He's seen me in a few actually, quite recently. Um yeah. Aww. He's not seen everything, but he's seen quite a few. Do you think he'll go into acting? <laughs> well, he's definitely started, so <laughs> unfortunately, maybe yes. Amazing. Good boy. So, uh, Standby World. Yes. We cover five parts. How many How many have you learnt so far? Three. Three. But the other day, you did Bob in the afternoon and I put in. And then yes. played Claude in the evening. What was that like? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was a bit... I really had to use my brain that day because I was very much concentrating on doing my dress rehearsal for Bob in the afternoon, which went really well. Um, and then as soon as that finished, I had to then switch that off, put that somewhere else in my brain for another time and then bring forward somehow Claude. <laughs> so I just felt like I was really concentrating really, really hard that night. Um, yeah, you were amazing, it, though. It went really well. You so. were brilliant. Well, Thanks. look, enjoy the next time you're on Craig. Thanks for chatting. <laughs> Okay, and here we are with lovely Stuart Hickey, who's one of our male standbys. Tell us about Standby Life, Stu. Standby Life is um, a lot of fun. I uh, never know what is happening from <laughs> one day to the other. <laughs> you wait for the, the call at either 11 o'clock on a two-show day or at three o'clock on a one-show day mm. to find out what out of the one to five characters you might be playing or might not be playing <laughs> that day. <laughs> So there you have it everybody, I hope you enjoyed your visit around Come From Away, thank you for joining us. As you can see it takes a multitude of people in so many different departments and so much talent to make this show happen. We are here at the Phoenix Theatre until January the 7th so please if you haven't seen us at the show please come down and join us and uh, we very much hope to see you on the rock. Lots of love, thanks for joining.